السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد and welcome thank you for joining us this is signs of the hour and we're continuing our talk about يأجوج and مأجوج we're going to do a whole bunch of analysis this time and I don't know if we're going to get to when Isa alayhi salam when they emerge and they, they go hide the believers and Isa alayhi salam hide from them or not but let's see what we can do we actually stopped at verse 94 technically قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض they said oh the القرنين يأجوج and مأجوج are great corruptors in the land and we discussed their, their possible crimes فهل نجعل لك خرجا uh, خرجا يعني uh, should we, can we basically pay you على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا that you put a barrier between us and them then verse 95 قال ما مكني فيه ربي خير he said the power in which my lord has established me يعني basically what my lord has given me is better than what you're offering me as far as your money I don't need your money فأعينوني بقوة this is what he asked them it's what I was talking about at the last uh, episode he says but assist me with labor بقوة with your strength with your labor even though he has enough but he's getting them involved and it's their issue and it's their problem and they shouldn't just sit back and someone else does the work they have to take part in it فأعينوني بقوة shows his wisdom right أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما hmm. that's interesting they asked for a said and he's put, saying I'll put a radn which which is what it, why I mean, what's possi- one possible difference here is that he's describing what he's going to do as far as the, the procedure he's going to put a radm meaning this said he's going to uh, um, he's going to basically pile it up and, and close it off like that he says, uh, he says, bring me Zubar al-Hadid. Zubar, we said, is plural of Zubra, which is like a big block, chunk of iron like that. حَتَّى إِذَا سَاوَى بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ And then, when, until he got to, it filled up the space between the mountains, the two steep mountains. All right? That means, these two mountains, there was a space in the middle between them. This is an opening. And he kept Yardum piling them up, piling up these chunks of iron until until he completely filled it up then what he said blow now as we're going through these verses are these descriptions all physical or figurative and any human being who wants to say the barrier is not real and it's physical it's not physical it's figurative we have to sit down with them and you have to go through this verse by verse Word for word, and explain to me what figuratively, what this would mean figuratively. And why did he ask for their labor, their quwa? And it just, it doesn't make any sense. For God's sake, those people who say this, give it up. Give it up. This you've, It's a dead end. It's not going anywhere. So, so, blow. Hatta idha ja'alahu nara. Until he, when he made it a fire. What does that mean? You've got chunks of iron. He said, blow on it. Blow what? Fire, light up a fire and blow. Just like a foundry. You know, and that's how you create intense heat with fire and a blow. Like that's why the, the bellow, if you've seen that, you know, um, the bellow blower, Nafiq al Kir from the hadith, he's using that to make that fire hotter to melt that metal. So then Allah says, then hatta idha ja'alahu nara. When he made it into a fire, how does iron become a fire? I think it's clear. So it melted now. So all these chunks, this melted now. It has melted. قال, قال أفرغ عليه قطرة. He says then, bring me so that I may pour قطرة over it. Now here this translation said it's molten lead, but no. قطرة, molten copper. Molten copper. Why copper? For human beings for the longest time ever, have made this mixture, meaning com- combined iron with copper. Why? Because iron, as you all know, if, if it, you know, water touches it or a lot of humidity, it rusts. 
becomes iron oxide. And over years and years and years, that rust will completely eat through something that's iron or metal, right? But people knew for, the, for thousands of years to, when they have something iron, to cover it with molten copper. Why? Because copper, when it reacts with the oxygen in the air, it turns dark, right? That's a very thin layer, and that becomes copper oxide. And that is resistant to further corrosion. So the copper itself, because of that layer, will not corrode or, or deteriorate. And therefore, whatever iron is behind it, that it was put to protect, will also be protected. So we've got even a mixture of these two very specific metals in this very specific way, after it was all melted and it completely this thick, incredibly thick wall of, of pure metal now, covered it with a, a thin layer of molten copper so that it can preserve it and it could last for thousands of years. What is figurative about that? I think it's very clear, right? So then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَسْطَاعُوا أَن يَظْهَرُوهُ وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَةً hmm. Now here we have actually some very interesting clues in this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا أَن يَظْهَرُوهُ يَظْهَرُوهُ يعني They climb over it. They could not climb over it. وَمَا اسْتَطَاعُوا لَهُ نَقْبَةً And they could not make a hole through it. So Allah said they can't climb over it and they can't make a hole through it, this barrier. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used different words or a, a, a slight different, slightly different words for being capable or able. Now, what's, what's here in the translation is it doesn't make a difference. Like in the translation, you can't see the difference. And that's why the beauty of the Quran specifically comes out in its original language in Arabic. So Allah says, They cannot climb over it. So sta'u for their uh, ability here. But when it comes to digging, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ista'u. Now which is easier to say? Sta' or istata'? Masta'u or mastata'u? Mastata'u is harder to say because there's an extra T there. You have to do this extra bounce, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always use the easier to, the word that's easier to pronounce for the thing that's easier to do. And the word that's harder to pronounce for the action that's harder to do. Hmm. Okay, I'll give you some examples in Surah An-Nur. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "لِكُلِّ مِرِئٍ مِنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ." For each man, what he earned of sin. But Allah didn't say "kasab," as we know in Surah Al-Masad. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُ مَا لُهُ وَمَا كَسَبْ. Not "iktasab," which is easier to say. Kasaba or iktasaba. Kasab is easier, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use it for the easier one. So Abu Lahab here, he was getting his wealth easily. He, it was coming to him without difficulty. So ma agna anhu ma luhu wa ma kasab. But there, concerning in Surah Al Nur here, the people, the sinners, in order to sin, you have to put effort. You have to hide the sin. You have to put effort to cover up and to do it with, uh, under cover of darkness where no one can see you. Because you have to put effort, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the extra difficult word. So, iktasab there. And there are other examples also in Surah Al-Kahf. And actually, yeah, the same surah that we're doing here. Um, when Al Musa wanted to join Al-Khadr, he told him, إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ sabra." But after he explained everything to him in verse 82, he says, ذَٰلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ sabra." تَسْطِعْ تَسْتَطِيعْ Which is difficult, more difficult to say. تَسْتَطِيعْ is more difficult. In the beginning, he used that word, al khadr uh, because he's saying, you don't know the explanation, it would be hard for you to, to be patient. But after he explained it, now it's easier to understand it. Now he used the easier word. It's just from the most amazing things about the Qur'an. And that's why anyone who ever claims that the Qur'an was written by a man, he has not read 10 words of the Qur'an. Anyone who studies this book sincerely 
can see. There's no way a human being sat there and thought of all this. Not even a committee of human beings. All right. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated that in this verse 97, that it would have been easier for them to climb over it. Because Allah used the easier word. They couldn't make a hole through it, but it would have been easier to climb over it. So the question is, why didn't they try to climb over it if climbing over was easier? Number one, because one explanation, and these the, the words of the scholars, not mine. Number one, because what the scholars described of them not being very intelligent to begin with. So they weren't smart enough to try to go over it and it would have been easier for them. Okay, that's one explanation. The second explanation should be the obvious one. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala steered them away from the easier one because He wants them to remain there for a long period of time, for an appointed time. And they're supposed to come out at a specific time. So if they, if they were, er, steered or guided towards choosing the easier one, they would come out. But that's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. And that's why they never considered to climb over, but they're trying to do the harder one, which is to dig the hole through the barrier. All right. So here's the question then. Why can't we find the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj? And we'll find people who say, we've explored the entire earth, so we should be able to find it. All right. And there's actually a speaker in the Arabic language and he, he basically promotes himself as, you know, all science based on all logic based. And this is in the Arabic language. But the, the problem is that this man is not able of, of, not capable of conducting a basic Google search. Google search, unexplored parts of the earth. And he's saying there's no Yajjid Majuj and he's also saying there's no Dajjal because we've explained, explored the entire earth. And through Google earth, we can see that there is no island with the Dajjal on it. We know every island. One more time, if Allah plans to hide something, do you think you can find it? If Allah plans to hide something, do you think you can find it? Google Earth or no Google Earth? It's, there's no way you'll find it. Let me tell you something about the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. It was covered up, we said, it was molten iron. It's between two mountains. And then on top of that, molten copper. And then, for thousands okay, of years, what happened? Mud came over it, and grass grew over, and plants grew, and rocks fell over it. So you could actually today be standing right next to the barrier, and you wouldn't be able to tell that that's the barrier. True or false? It's not like it's just a metal glass door, it's in huge big gates and you can see them. They're covered now. So you could be standing right next to it and say, there's no such thing as a Yujim Ayyuj because we can't find the barrier and you're standing on top of the barrier. So it's when, when people try to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plans like that and challenge his religion like that, and then they're Muslim, what a disaster. So he says, we explored the earth. He, we did not explore the earth, all right? We know, for, for example, that the oceans, we have not even explored 1% of the oceans, just a small percentage. But we know they're not in the oceans. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how much of the earth have we explored? We think, khalas, with all our technology and telescopes and satellites, we know every inch of this earth. We don't know much of this earth. So, okay, caves. So, there are many caves that have not been discovered. Where people constantly, as we speak, are discovering new caves. So forget the ones that we haven't discovered, leave those aside. Of the caves on earth that we have discovered and we know of their location, how many of these have we explored? Take a guess. What percentage of the caves that we know have we explored? 10%. Can you imagine that? 10%. These are the ones we know. We're still discovering caves all the time. You know, recently in Southeast Asia, this was a few years ago, they discovered a cave that was so gigantic that it had its own ecosystem underneath. It had its own ecosystem, meaning it could sustain life inside this cave. I know a friend of mine, you know, and he was saying, he's a scientist, so he's saying, like, there's no way they can be inside a huge underground cave, because we know, science tells us, that human beings need sunlight. I, uh, science tells, I love that science tells us. Science comes and calls you every night, huh? tells you things. I'll tell you, I personally, 
And this was in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. There is the, uh, the Batu Caves, any of you have ever visited. It's basically a huge, these caves are basically in the mountain. So you're going up lots and lots and lots of stairs, hundreds of stairs. You finally get to the top, there is a cave inside the mountain. And you walk in and it's not man-made, like it's naturally hollowed out mountain. All right, and it's still a mountain. And then you look up and right at the top there, there's an opening and sunlight is coming through that opening. And if that door that you entered from, if it was sealed off, there would be no way out of that mountain. And the, the, the opening where the sun is coming from is way up high. Like there's no ladder or rope that can even reach there. So people would be stuck there forever. So this is an example of a cave completely closed off and getting sunlight. And I've walked into it. And I don't try to seal off every possibility because you were not creative, Mathanan, or you didn't Google well. And I can see that I'm quite frustrated here. I've met some people who said some insane things or tried to dominate the unseen. Only one will dominate the unseen. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anytime you find a speaker or someone who thinks they know the unseen, they've got it figured out. They haven't figured anything out and stop listening to them. That's the more important part. Never listen to people like that. We've got to respect the limitations of our knowledge. We have to respect the plan of Allah and the knowledge and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not try to think we can break the code all the time. That's very, very important in, in, in adab and in dealing with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and dealing with what His Prophet taught us and in His religion. All right. So, other unexplored parts of the earth. Greenland. Greenland has ice sheets, ice sheets that cover 80% of, the, of, the, of its land mass basically. Interestingly, in June 2014, look how recent. In June 2014, they discovered an entirely new underworld that was completely hidden. More than one mile beneath the sheet of ice. Yeah, and it, a lot of, imagine an ice sheet one mile, and down there, there's completely new underworld that was just discovered in June 2014. So, and if you speak to someone in June 2014, they'll tell you, oh, we've explored the whole earth and there's nothing new, and then, huh. Here's a new underworld, a complete new underworld. Siberia. We know Russia is the largest country on earth. And it's the largest country on earth by far. I mean, it's much bigger than the second largest country on earth, much bigger than the third largest country on earth. And 77% of Russia's land mass is what is known as Siberia, which is very cold, very inhospitable, and very unexplored. Now remember when we mentioned Al-Mustawfi and Ibn Hawqal and Al-Qazwini, we said they, they drew maps a thousand years ago showing the barrier in very northern parts of Russia and the Caucasus regions. Now suppose, suppose that the barrier of Ya'juj and Ma'juj is in Siberia, which is 77% of Russia and extremely unexplored, very cold areas. And let's someone says, okay, we're going to, through Google Maps, split up Siberia amongst 200 volunteers and we're going to search every inch of Siberia. Taibi Habib, it's a lot of snow, all right? And maybe this is the barrier right here, but when you look at a satellite image of it, you just see snow on top of it and some trees. How will you know? That's why there's no way you can defeat this. There's no way you can challenge this, right? Um, yeah, much of it of Siberia unexplored. The Amazon rainforest, that covers a span of nine different countries. It's not just like one country that has the Amazon rainforest. It's so huge that there are nine, it, it goes through nine different countries, right? It's 5.5 million square kilometers. That's gigantic. And uh, some scientists believe that 10% of the world species could be living in that. Meaning, look at all the species on the planet, just 10% of them, all of them are just in the Amazon jungle. And others believe it could be up to 50%. 50% of the world's species of animals could just be in the Amazon jungle. And there are still many species of animals that are deep inside that jungle that have not been discovered. Have not been discovered. Like we think we've discovered every type of animal and living creature. No, there are many that have not been discovered and they'll discover new things every now and then. So to, to think that we've explored the earth and we've dominated and, and we have a handle on the situation, we don't. Um, further, uh, further examples here, we've got um, in, in uh, Papua New Guinea, 
a lot of it, extremely dense vegetation, no roads leading to these places, a lot of it virtually unexplored. In Myanmar or Burma, largely unexplored. The Congo Basin, all right, it's, it covers 15% of Africa. The Congo Basin covers 15% of the continent of Africa. And it's even less explored than the Amazon rainforest. What's in there? We're not saying the barrier is in there. You're saying, not you, that guy. He said, we've explored the entire earth and we're showing that the majority of it has not been, I mean, so much of it has not been explored. So much of it and we know where it is and we still haven't explored it, let alone things we don't know where they are. All right, other examples, Antarctica, you know, and understandably why, not very explored. 1993, that wasn't that long ago, they, ex they discovered an entire lake there. Just sitting, it was always there, no one ever saw it. Um, in Bhutan, Bhutan, they have a, um, a law, basically any mountain over this number of feet is considered sacred and no one's allowed to explore it at all. So you've got a lot of mountain ranges in that area that no one's ever gone in to explore, right? So what do we see from this? We see that the barrier, forget the unexplored parts of the earth, it could be in the explored part of the earth, you could stand next to it and you wouldn't know. So many of these mountain ranges in the Caucasus region, so many. What if the barrier is in one of them and it's completely covered? How would you know? You would not know. So to tell me that we've explored the earth, therefore the barrier isn't real, that is nonsense. Okay, now we examined, we said, was the barrier actual or figurative? We said it's actual. We've got actual iron, chunks of iron. We've got copper. We've got blow. We've got melting. Um, then we have the hadith where the Prophet says, wakes up one night and he says, Yajuj and Majuj have opened the hole this big. If this is not physically this big opening, what does it mean figuratively to open something this big? It doesn't make any sense. Um, they will dig until they almost see the sunlight. Is that figurative or literal when you almost see the sunlight after digging? It's between two saddain. Is that figurative or literal? Allah will cause the barrier to collapse, the hadith says. The barrier to collapse. When someone says, no, the barrier to collapse means he will cause them to come out. Why say the barrier to collapse? It just doesn't make any sense. All these are very physical descriptions. All right. Now, um, the, the problem with saying, so we've got, we, I explained why a lot of people say the barrier was figurative because they couldn't fathom, explain, understand the idea of how one, we can't find them, two, how can they all be somewhere, such a huge number of people and we, you know, where would they be, what, what kind of space would, would fit them. The other, the other thing is that those who say the barrier is figurative, meaning it's not a physical barrier and these are not people who are trapped, they were then put in a very embarrassing position and they had to explain where they, who they, they were, Yajuj and Majuj, who are they? If they're not behind the barrier, that means they're out. If they're out, it means they're one of these nations that are in front of us. So, uh, and again, I'm going to very, very far distance myself from these opinions because I believe they're very insulting opinions, all right? But I remember uh, a famous speaker from Kuwait, he said, I believe, despite this issue of the barrier or not, he said, I believe Yajuj and Majuj are the Chinese and the Indians. Okay, so um, the uh, basically there are about 50 million Muslims in China. Some estimates say 100 million, we can never be sure. But let's just go with 50 million Muslims in China. And 180, Muslim, uh, 180 million Muslims in India. This is like the second largest Muslim population is in India. And this guy from Kuwait, and what's the population of Kuwait by the way? Or if you don't know, Google it. It's 16 people. So this guy from a country of 16 people is calling something like 230 million people, Muslims, calling them Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Calling them these kuffar that will come and kill the world. And then there are other problems. The, 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 the Indian people, people from the Indian subcontinent, look like the authentic description of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. You know, wide faces and small eyes. And do, do they look like that? They don't look like that at all. So you're wrong again. Now, others said, 
They are the Mongols. Okay, look, remember our rule. Go back to the earliest classes we did on this series. We said the rule is you have to match all the descriptions, not some of them. It doesn't qualify. They said the Mongols in Mongolia. They're the they're Yajuj and Majuj. Well, you match the description, we'll give you that. But you don't match their numbers. And by the way, 3% of Mongolians are Muslims. So you're calling those Muslims Yajuj and Majuj. You call them Kuffar, you call them those people who will come and murder everybody. That's one. Two, their numbers we said are wrong. Yajuj and Majuj are incredibly many in their numbers. So that's wrong. It has to fit all the descriptions. Um, and they're also the Mongolians. Some of them are in Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan. We said their appearance is there, but their numbers are wrong. So you have to match everything. Um, if you say the barrier is not physical, it's figurative, you have to explain who they are on earth. You have to point to a group of people on earth right now who look like Ya'juj and Ma'juj and have the numbers and say that's them. And that's problematic and that's embarrassing. Other myths concerning the barrier. They said it is the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China. Now, um, <laughs> where do we even start? Like it's just sad how sometimes people say things without exploration, without thinking, without extending that thought. Um, the Great Wall of China, first of all, is not between Saddain at all. It's not a dam or a barrier between two mountains. Not at all. Number two, it's not even a continuous wall. I mean, it's so sad that people are saying, oh, it's the barrier. It's not even a, a, a barrier. I mean, the, the Great Wall of China, if you look at uh, a map of it, it twists and turns and it was not built by the Qarnayn. Two, it was built by different dynasties, like they'll build this portion and this portion. It does not even go through China or even, it's not even one continuous wall. Did you know that? It's not even a continuous wall to say it's a barrier. And if that were the barrier, then you would just walk to the end of it and just say, hello, we're coming out. It's not even continuous. There are many openings in it. And then the other thing is, it's not built of iron and copper, it's built of brick, of stones. So it just doesn't even begin to match. You know, it doesn't even begin to match. That's like just finding a giraffe and saying, oh, this is a bird, matches the, bird, the description of a bird. It doesn't, not even, it doesn't even come close to it. So, um, very good. And the Chinese are out. The Chinese are out. I mean, the Chinese, if you're saying, it's the Great Wall of China and it's trapping the Chinese. Well, that's a very bad trap because they're everywhere and they are giving people great deals on <laughs> products that are made in China. And now they're, now it's the virus as well. Anyways, the point is, um, just, it just doesn't make any sense. Has anyone ever found the dam of Yajuj and Majuj? Oh, what do we say? The Khalifa, al wathiq Billah, he had a dream that the, the dam or the, the dam of Yajuj and Majuj was open. So he woke up disturbed and he commissioned a man by the name of Salam at turjuman who took 60 men with him and they went out looking for the barrier and they actually found the barrier of Yajuj and Majuj. I'll tell you that story next time, inshallah, you're going to have to wait till next time. I'm going to tell you this amazing story of people who actually Muslims who found the barrier, documented everything, described it, and then came back and lived to tell about it. The story of Salam at turjuman coming up next time, inshallah. Zakmullah khairan for your attentive listening, for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Sallallahu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.